So, in my last video, I took a look at a custom ROM, which was the Havoc OS by Simply Jeeves for the OnePlus 2. Well, today I'll be taking a different approach, and instead of custom ROMs, I'll be reviewing a custom kernel for the OnePlus 2. So I believe most of us know what a kernel is. Well, let's start off by explaining what a ROM is. A ROM is just something that is kind of a customized operating system. We are still using the same operating system which is Android, but it's kind of customizing in the fact that maybe a ROM adds a bit more features, uh, maybe a bit more customizing abilities, and maybe just a little bit of performance improvements here and there. Basically, a custom ROM only focuses mainly on the user interface. Well, a custom kernel, on the other hand, kind of focuses more on the hardware part of things. Basically, uh, maybe improving the performance of the ROM, uh, increasing the battery life, and we can overclock and undervolt the processor of our phones. So there are many custom kernels out there, and most of them focus on performance and battery life mainly. And very few kernels out there focuses on features and so on. So, the custom kernel I'll be taking a look today has definitely been a prime contender for the best kernel in the OnePlus 2 department and it basically focuses on overclocking and undervolting the processor. And for you guys who know the OnePlus 2 scene will definitely know which kernel I'm talking about. It is no gravity kernel. So this no gravity kernel basically has uh, overclocked uh, processor speeds and even underclocked actually and undervolting on the processor. So you can go up to speeds of 2 gigahertz on the big core for the OnePlus 2 and going down to a minimum of, if I'm not mistaken, 300 megahertz for the core clock, therefore improving the battery life as well. So without further ado, I'm Amish from the Tech Grid, and today we'll be taking a look at No Gravity Kernel for the OnePlus 2. So, before installing this custom kernel, the one thing I did is benchmarks. So, the main thing that you would focus on is two things. As I mentioned in the intro, uh, the performance and the battery life. So I'll be checking the performance of my stock Havoc OS. I'm using Havoc OS as the base ROM. Although yes, it's an AOSP ROM and the kernel that we are going to flash would be a lineage based kernel. But that really doesn't matter that much in certain ROMs because this AOSP ROM was built based on lineage source. So it shouldn't be a problem. So the first thing I'm going to do here is perform a benchmark. And as you guys can see, I'm using Geekbench to perform, to check out the performance of the stock ROM with the stock kernel. And before I forget, shout out to Mukul for uh, creating the stealth kernel in the previous video, uh, Havoc OS. I forgot to kind of credit him in the last video, so definitely a huge, huge shout out to him. And make sure you guys go and subscribe to his channel. It's called Stealth Gaming. If you're not sure, you can uh, scroll down to the comments of my previous video and find Stealth Gaming right there. So yeah. So now that the benchmark is completed, we can see that single core score is at 1,190, while multi-core score is 2,805. I'll just remind you, I'm running Havoc OS for the OnePlus 2 on Android Pi. I, if I'm not mistaken, it's Havoc OS version 2.2. Let's take a look at comparisons. So this device for the Havoc OS, uh, the single core scored 1,190 while an average OnePlus 2 only scores 1,042. So we can take a look at other OnePlus comparison, the OnePlus 3, OnePlus 5, and the OnePlus 2. So moving on to the multi-core section, you can see this, uh, my device scored 2,805 while an average OnePlus 2 scores 2,673. And we can take a look at some other devices here. Yep, it's 2,763, my bad. Uh, yeah, that's the benchmark scores for uh, stock Havoc OS with the stock stealth kernel. 
So guys, I've just finished flashing the no gravity kernel for LOS. Although this is AOSB as I mentioned before, uh, for this ROM it should be fine because it was built on lineage sources. So I've just finished uh, flashing the kernel, no gravity kernel, by Pierre. I believe that's how he mentioned his name. So I've installed it now and I'll be running the same Geekbench benchmark in hopes of, you know, seeing some results. But just a disclaimer guys, although the benchmark score might even be more or might sometimes be lower, that does not determine the performance of the kernel. So just running the benchmarks here and the benchmark should complete in a while and there we go the benchmark is completed so according to this benchmark the single core score is 1226 and the multi core score is 2709 so again i'm telling you guys this does not determine much you guys can feel the performance for yourselves instead of just depending on the score so as you can see the single core score uh, this device got 1226 well then average one plus two only gets 1042 now for the multi-core comparison this device only scored 2709 while an average score would be 2763 i know what you guys are thinking that is kind of a downgrade so as you can see just comparing with all the other oneplus devices there and yeah that's for the first benchmark result with the no gravity kernel by Pierre so uh, once I'm done with the benchmarks now I'm gonna take a look at the app that comes with this ROM I mean the kernel my bad yes this kernel comes with an app that you should install if you want to customize anything and I highly recommend you do so it is the no gravity kernel app uh, yep there it is no gravity kernel app by Pierre it's version 2.4 now and just to let you guys know this app has been revamped to a certain extent I would say it's definitely way better because it feels a lot smoother than the previous versions of the app he has had and it's just more responsive so as you guys can see uh, this no gravity kernel app comes with a lot of pre-built uh, kind of profiles for the use and there's a lot of features like gestures for pocket mode proximity wake, pickup wake, and even tilt wake. Uh, though, yes, it will need certain permissions for it to work. But yeah, there's the flip to shush, uh, pickup to wake, proximity wake, and many more. You can actually even check the uh, GPU usage uh, frequency. So you can kind of check um, what frequency your GPU was running on. So next up, they got the new feature, sound support. So there's this new DTS. X driver support and this is supposed to really really enhance the music uh, experience on your ROM and yeah it supports DTS now so moving on there's some kernel options as you can see you can turn on the thermals of the no gravity kernel which kind of increases the thermal throttling uh, temperature there's another feature that I love is the ability to control the voltages by yourself of course, before I even go any further, I would say if you were to mess around with these voltages, do it at your own risk. Definitely, uh, if you were going to test it out by yourself, test it out, keep reducing. And at a certain point that your phone crashes, you want to reboot and make it one step or two steps higher than at the point that it crashed. So that is just a small tip there if you want to kind of... Uh, undervolt your kernel just a tip that I felt necessary to share so that is pretty much the no gravity kernel app and as I mentioned earlier there's a lot of profiles in this app definitely check it out check out the XDA forums to find out more about the um, settings kind of the options for the uh, kernel profiles as you can see there's this feature uh, on the kernel called performance plus where it kind of it's a performance profile but an improved version of it so the next is the apply on boot well this apply on boot has uh, received an update from uh, Pierre apparently there's a new apply on boot notification but I did not check it out as I uh, didn't restart my phone so I didn't actually 
get to see where this new uh, notification is so yeah that's pretty much it for the no gravity kernel app so guys uh, before I ended the video I wanted to run another uh, benchmark score from Geekbench just to prove to you guys that this be these benchmark scores are not at all final over here you can see that the single core is 1530 1530 where the average is 1042 which is a decent improvement from the last benchmark I would say and the multi core has definitely increased from the last benchmark from 2007 to 2750 of course the original still shows 2763 but honestly I think this is just a random error from the benchmark because the performance in this ROM is crazy, like really, really crazy. And there's also other profiles like, you know, the performance profile that I showed earlier, the gaming profile, these really, really improve the performance of the kernel. So definitely, definitely check out this ROM. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope uh, this really helped you guys decide whether to flash the ROM or not. Uh, definitely I would flash it any day because the performance in gains here is just really really good uh, So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video guys. Thanks for watching uh, Please make sure to like this video if you have anything uh, Any comments or maybe anything you want me to improve comment it below uh, Don't be afraid if you have any questions. I will definitely be more than glad to answer those questions And if that's all then subscribe to my channel. This is Umesh signing off from the tech grid. Peace out guys.